Say, are you excited to go see Captain Marvel? Well, hold on a minute. Are you white? Are you male? And especially, are you over the age of 40? <laughs> then you're not to see this film because it's not for you, according to the star, Brie Larson. Yes, she's more interested in uh, other people beyond just white dudes. Yeah, so this all started back when she gave that statement where she seemed to think she was defending the movie A Wrinkle in Time, which was an enormous flop, and she blamed it all on white dudes, specifically 40-year-old uh, white dudes, and said, the movie was not for you! Because you see, Brie Larson is pro-segregation. <laughs> there should be a sign. <laughs> uh, you know, no, uh, no white dudes. <laughs> outside the theater for these films so that they can't say anything about it and so uh, whatever opinions you've had no matter what the details were uh it's irrelevant because of your race and gender so it doesn't matter uh what part of it you uh, found uh, that was uh a wanting it does not matter and uh she makes no real defense of the film at all she just says it's all because of the white male patriarchy. Yes, that horrible empire of evil that continues to dominate the world today. Yeah. So, uh, you would think that she would kind of back off of that when she went, does that mean I hate white dudes? No. Well, you can't just say no. You When you say something like that, it's, yeah, you do hate them. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, she did this interview uh, for Marie Claire with a woman named Kia Brown, and uh, both of whom uh, agree with this idea that uh, whoever uh, different uh, sites about movies and magazines and whatnot need to hire more uh, women of color to be uh, movie reviewers because we're not getting a real uh, uh, response to these films that uh, for people that look like them. Yes, and that's what's important. Oh, and Kia Brown goes on to talk about herself in the article about because she says she's disabled, she has cerebral palsy, and she goes on about uh, not only it, it's not just white dudes in wheelchairs. <laughs> in case you didn't know, <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, one of the main uh, uh, quotes here says. Uh, Bree says, about a year ago, I started paying attention to what my press days looked like, and the critics reviewing movies, and noticed it appeared to be overwhelmingly white male. So I spoke to Dr. Stacy Smith at the USC Annenberg Inclusion Initiative, who put together a study to confirm that. <laughs> I bet it did. <laughs> Um, moving forward, I decided to make sure my press days were more inclusive by being discriminatory. Yeah. After speaking with you, the film critic Marie, uh, Valerie Complex, Valerie Complex, well, okay, and a few other women of color, it sounded like across the board they weren't getting the same opportunities as others. Again, get yourself a YouTube channel and review movies, and there you go. Uh, and if you're good at it, you're going to get a following and people will hear your opinions on films. But I, 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 I guess Miss Larson is uh, unaware of this and perhaps uh, um, uh, Dr. Smith as well. When I talked to the facilities that weren't providing it, they all had different excuses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, don't mess with Brie Larson. She's Captain Marvel, goddammit. And she's going to speak up. She will be the white savior of women of color. Because she's Captain Marvel, damn it. And, you know, there's a strange thing about Captain Marvel that Miss Larson clearly doesn't know. And I guess Marie Claire doesn't either. Who knew Marie Claire would know absolutely nothing about, you know, superheroes and comic book characters? <laughs> uh, but uh, the original first female Captain Marvel was a woman of color named Monica Rambeau. Yeah, that's right. That's the one I remember when I was a kid. Uh, she was in Secret Wars, which was a very significant uh, event in the comic book world. It set off a chain of it. It was really a cool story, but uh, the, the copying of it and the event stuff kind of just destroyed <laughs> comics. Well, one of the elements anyway. Now it's like every other week there's another big crossover event. But anyway, 
yes, Monica Rambeau was Captain Marvel in that series. And she went on to become the leader of the Avengers, yes. And then she just sort of vanished. I, I don't know why they changed her name to Photon, and now it's Spectrum. Yeah, I, mean, I think Photon's a little better. But, uh, but she, why couldn't she stay Captain Marvel? Why can't she be Captain Marvel now? I don't know. Yes, there was a male Captain Marvel uh, who died of cancer. Uh, but in some weird incident in his uh, series, uh, Carol Danvers got caught up in it and uh, received uh, aspects of his DNA, which gave her superpowers. And she became Ms. Marvel. So that was her name. That was her identity, if you will. And over decades, she was Ms. Marvel. For some reason, uh, they, they, they messed with her here and there. She lost her powers to Rogue, and then she became this uh, character called Binary. <laughs> Whoops, oh, we don't want to <laughs> talk about that. And then she became Warbird. Uh, yeah, that wasn't any good. Anyway, so, look, she's Ms. Marvel, so she was back to being Ms. Marvel. She was in the Avengers for a while there. And then Sana Aminat showed up and said, she, we need a Muslim character. No, not, we're not going to use the Muslim characters they already had. Yes, that's right, they did. Uh, go, going all the way back to Arabian Night. I knew him when I was a kid. He, he was in a Ghost Rider issue. And one of the first comics I read was Contest of Champions. And if you're going to tell me <laughs> that Marvel is only now diverse, <laughs> well, <laughs> you're an idiot. So, uh, yeah, uh, Bree, you need to resign from the Captain Marvel film because you are stealing the name of a woman of color. Yes, you are. You're absolutely stealing it. Now, they just can go back and recall it uh, uh, Ms. Marvel. But, oh, no, we had to give that to the Muslim girl. So now, now, what are we going to do with poor Carol? Well, boy, I tell you, uh, this crap that keeps getting thrown around, rather than actually tell us what a fun, fantastic adventure movie this movie is, you don't hear any of that, certainly not from her. All we hear about the, the word her is in hero, and the future is female, and she kicks ass. Every time that stuff comes about, the movie is crap. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> and they shield it with this nonsense, and that if you uh, criticize it, you're a, uh, in some cases a racist, some cases a misogynist, uh, sexist, what have you. Uh, or both, depending on what the movie is. And that's how it's defended, rather than what was the story, what was it, the adventure, and all that. And so it this continues to not look good. Now, it could be because Marvel movies, on, on the whole, on the average, are pretty good, or at least uh, you know adequate and fun. Uh, this one could be a, a fun film, a good one. But man, <laughs> this advertising for it is just absolutely atrocious, and whoever thought this was a good idea should be fired immediately. And that includes Brie herself. You can recast it. They recast Dr. Banner <laughs> with a far uh, inferior uh, actor, I would say. <laughs> but uh, you might want to do that. Now, uh, th all this stuff is really terrible because it is uh, her, her ideals and what she's putting out there which I don't think she's smart enough to understand any of this, so you could probably give her a pass on that. She's just an idiot. But it it is racist. It is bigoted. It's sexist. It's misandry uh, and racism. And uh, she could still do a good job in this movie. I mean, the trailers seem to show her as this you know, brick wall of acting. <laughs> but that could be explained within the plot. She loses her memories and all that stuff. And it, it, it could turn out, but this is absolutely awful uh, to roll this film out with this garbage. And uh, it, it's really staining the whole uh, 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 franchise, if it's going to be a franchise. It may just be a one and done. She shows up in Avengers and then we just... Carol who? <laughs> you know? uh, but she could do a good job, but it's just all this crap. It's so much of it out in front all at once like this and pushing and enforcing it, it really does damage. Because, I mean, there's other people in the Marvel movies I can't stand, but they do great work. Like Mark Ruffalo, I don't like him. Uh, another idiot. Uh, and Chris Evans, uh, another knothead, but he did a fantastic job as Captain America. And um, so could she be an, an, another Chris Evans? It could be. I, you know, But it's just getting harder and harder. 
I'm not going to see it early. It'll be very late when I see that film. Because uh, at, at this rate, I could be pushed to think, I'll just wait till it's on TV. <laughs> so there you go, Brie Larson, uh, who stole the Captain Marvel title from a black woman. Yes, I know Monica is in the film, but she's just this background bit player and she's the daughter of Captain Marvel's uh, best friend from the uh, Air Force. So not even a sidekick at this point. <laughs> so, so yeah, all this preaching and uh, on visuals and uh, skin color and yet look at this. Well, huh. So, if you're going to be consistent and logical... Oh, who am I kidding? The left are never that way. <laughs> so, yeah, this is all garbage, and it mocks and treats serious issues uh, like toys, and it's wrong. But, again, the people involved, especially Miss Larson here, not too bright. Not too bright. Thank you for watching and listening. Say, while you're here, why not subscribe? And check out that link description below. That'll take you to my many stores that have plenty of goodies for you.